Today on CityCast Philly, the remains of 50 unhoused Philadelphians will be laid to rest tomorrow at Mount Peace Cemetery in North Philly. I'm speaking with two groups who are making sure their burials are dignified. It's Monday, May 22nd. I'm Trinae Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Michelle Wexler, Program Manager of Homeless Services at the Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. Thank you for being here on CityCast Philly. Hi, Trine. Thank you for having us. Quibilia Divine, Chief Program Officer at Self Incorporated, which also provides housing and support services for people experiencing homelessness. Thank you also for being here on CityCast Philly. Thank you so much for having us. How many homeless people's remains go unclaimed each year in our city. How does this happen? Well, what happens, unfortunately, is those who are experiencing homelessness and they pass away, sometimes it's difficult to be able to get in contact with family members. Mm -hmm. And as a result, those remains would just stay there. And what happens with the, um, the city is that they cremate them as opposed to just leaving the bodies there. And as a result, the cremains are there waiting to either be claimed, but because we don't know who they belong to or that may be there, that's virtually impossible. So I will add that the medical examiner's office, Bilya is correct, they do cremate the unclaimed bodies that are there. They do get hundreds of those bodies. They are not all from people that were formerly homeless or currently homeless. They have investigators at the medical examiner's office that do everything they can to find next of kin, to contact families, friends, whoever they can. And they go through a variety of ways of doing that. So friends and family can also call the medical examiner's office to find out if a loved one's remains are there. That number is 215-685-7455. And that number can be called 24-7. Now, Sometimes unhoused people are overlooked and discarded or forgotten about while they're living. But when it comes to their death and their burial process, how does the city make sure they're remembered? Certainly. So our former president and CEO, Michael Henson, who himself transitioned last year, upon finding out that Lester Ross, who was in the homeless system for about maybe 20 years or so, When he transitioned as a result of COVID and Mike found out and that his cremains were at the uh, medical examiner's office, he wanted to do something. So he held the New Orleans style ceremony for Lester. That's with like uh, umbrellas and a band playing and and dancing. Yeah, We were all out at Thomas Paine Plaza right in front of the municipal services building and had a, a wonderful time, provided resources, had tables that provided resources to those who were there, homeless or not, and um, just had a a ball, you know. And then what happened afterwards is that uh, Michael decided that they wanted to actually bury Lester's remains. And when they went to do that, found out that there were others in addition to Lester who were homeless when they transitioned and wanted to bury them all. So they started the uh, Lester Ross Memorial Homeless Fund. I want to go back to actually who Lester was. Who who was Lester? (laughs) Lester was a personality that you once met, you would not be able to forget him. He was one who would call you out on anything that he thought you were doing wrong, as well (laughs) as call you out on things when you weren't doing anything wrong, um, regardless of your position, your title or your stature in life. Lester had an infectious smile, and um, he just was a great personality. And so this is now a tradition to celebrate those who have transitioned in this way? So this is the second year we are doing this. Hopefully this will remain a tradition. I say hopefully it would be wonderful if we didn't have any people at the medical examiner's office that were unclaimed. That would be the the bigger hope, of course. But um, while there are people that are unclaimed, it is our hope that we can continue to do this yearly. So this is the second one, and we will be burying 50 cremains that were at the medical examiner's office. (music) 
I want to talk about the actual ceremony. So uh, Mount Peace Cemetery in North Philadelphia will be the final resting place of these individuals. Can you tell me about how the ceremony will go? Sure. I can talk a little bit about the ceremony. So we are going to have the opening remarks from Dr. Jacqueline Bailey Davis with the Philadelphia Police Department. We have people coming from city council. We have 50 approximately Philadelphia Police Academy cadets that are going to take the cremains to where their final placement of burial will be. We have faith leaders from all different backgrounds of all different religions. We have ministers, we have a rabbi, we have an imam coming to speak. They'll all say something at the ceremony. And um, we're going to conclude with uh, the reciting of all of the names. So everybody who is buried, their name will be said out loud. We are hoping that people's family members, you know, if they find out about this event, which is wonderful that you're doing this, can come out, can say goodbye if they didn't know that their family member was going to be there. Is this open to the public? It is open to the public. Have you all gotten any feedback from the families of those who are buried? Or what's been the impact of this program? We have had some family members who have claimed the cremains once knowing where they were and or they have participated in the event. So we've had both things happen. If you all didn't have this ceremony, didn't have this tradition, what would happen to these Philadelphians? Unfortunately, their cremains would likely be there unclaimed and unknowing that they are there. And this gives us an opportunity to provide them some dignity in death, even though in life they may not have felt that they had as much dignity. Michelle uh, Kubila, what would you like us to remember about those who will be laid to rest? I would say that I want people to remember that they're somebody's child. They might be somebody's parent, somebody's sibling, somebody's friend. There are people, there are communities on the street of people that love them, that cared about them, that are grateful to have a chance to say goodbye, possibly. we Just so you know, we do every year have a homeless person's Memorial Day where every year the community comes out and we read the names aloud of all the people that have died in the previous year that were homeless or formerly homeless. And there's a large community of people that come out to light a candle, to cry, to stand there, to hear their names being said out loud. It's extremely touching and moving. And, um, you know, it, it's it's poignant that we can say goodbye to people. And I just hope that the longer we do this, maybe it'll bring attention to the fact that people may be buried there if someone is looking for their family members. Sometimes people, when they become street homeless and they're living away from family, they do lose touch. They don't know what has happened to their loved ones. So I want people to know that somebody's there caring for them and saying goodbye. And I'd like for people to know that these are Philadelphians. And as the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, we need to be mindful that despite where a person is in death does not mean that they should just be forgotten. And by doing what we're doing in burying the cremains of those who had experienced homelessness at their death, I think that it provides the type of acknowledgement that these are or were human souls. And we must remember that there before the grace of the creator go I. And as we would want to be remembered, so should they. And this is giving them the opportunity to have that recognition and acknowledgement. Quibilia and Michelle, thank you so much for joining me on CityCast Philly. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you so much for having us. To make a donation to the Lester Ross Memorial Fund, go to the Self Incorporated website. We'll have a link in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. Penn Medicine is opening a new mental health crisis center at the former Mercy Hospital in West Philly. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, reopening this building will expand access to behavioral health and addiction treatment services at a time when demand for mental health care is surging. The center is expected to open in late summer. 
And you might see a new flag flying high at City Hall. Well, according to WHYY, the city raised a baby blue flag to celebrate being selected as one of 11 American cities hosting the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Matches will be held down at the link in South Philly. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you found this episode to be helpful, please share with a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.